So 2023 is shaping up to be the year of the fighter. With the highly successful launch of Street Fighter 6 and with the release of Mortal Kombat 1 and Tekken 8 all on the horizon, the fighting game community is at an all-time high this year. Now for casual players, the thought of having a special dedicated controller for fighting games is probably an afterthought. A lot of casual players don't even know the different options that are available to them. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the different controller types that are available to you and some of the pros and the cons to them. What's going on everyone? This is Milan at Infinite Life and let's get into this video. Now before we start talking about the different controller options, I think the biggest question we have to ask ourselves is why. Why are there so many special controllers for such a niche gaming genre and why do you need one? Well. It's quite easy actually. It comes down to input accuracy and response to be able to pull off combos efficiently. If you are able to pull off your inputs faster than your opponent, that gives you the advantage in the match. Now if you delve deep into the fighting game community, you will learn that some of the best players don't use a special fighting controller. They excel with your standard console controller. So this ultimately comes down to what you feel is right for you and what controller you will do best with. Okay, so first off, let's start with your standard console controller whether it be PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, or even PC. Now, I'm a PlayStation gamer primarily, and I have the DualSense. Now, the great thing about the standard console controller, everyone has one. It comes with your console, there's no extra expense, and you are familiar with it, especially if you've been a longtime gamer and you know the feel of your controller, the button layout, and there's a sense of familiarity, so you're not having to develop new muscle memory or learning new inputs with your console pad. They are lightweight, easy to take with you to a friend's house or a tournament, and for the most part, they are the cheapest option in comparison to other pads that we'll be talking about. Now the downside to your console controller as a fighting pad, ultimately, these aren't designed for fighting games. Original fighting games were designed during the time of arcade cabinets for stick and button movements and inputs, and although modern fighting games are adapting to console controllers, it's still not its strongest point. The fighting genre is a niche market when it comes to video games in general, so the console controllers have evolved to be more suitable for the majority of video games. Dual stick inputs for movements and action adventure and FPS games, triggers for racers and again FPS, and you are also using your thumbs for majority of the inputs and the rest of your fingers are only there to grip your controller. The other downside of most console controllers is the directional pad is not very precise. The outer shell of a lot of controllers makes it look like the directional pads are individual, but underneath they are all rotating on a singular disc. On the right side of your controller, you have your face buttons along with your bumper and trigger, and that in there lies the problem itself. You have six buttons with three different tactical inputs. The face buttons have a membranous feel to them. The R1 button is a bit more clicky, and then the R2 is a trigger saw button, all with different tactical feel, resistance, travel time, and input registration. There is a complete lack of consistency when it comes to fighting games. Out of all of the console controllers, the Xbox is probably the most ideal because of the D-pad being more tactical and clicky because of the metal switches underneath. And it also has diagonal buttons on the D-pad to help with those diagonal inputs, followed by the PlayStation controller, and lastly, the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. So let's actually start getting into some of the different fighting pad options out there. Now, if you are a longtime FGC player, you or someone you know probably owned one of these. This is the B-Top C3 Thorn, a dedicated fighting pad which has everything you need for a fighting game and nothing more. Now, why do I love this controller so much? Right off the bat, you see that there are six face button inputs on the right instead of four, like you usually would see. This is especially great for Street Fighter as you have access to the three punch and three kick commands all in a straight line. Even in your four button fighting games like Tekken and Mortal Kombat, this controller is great. And you can then have access to two additional macro buttons right on the face, mapped to your input of choice. The buttons are very clicky and the inputs are nearly instantaneous. The shoulder buttons are also instant input with their short travel. There is no trigger style input on the top. Now on the left side of the controller, you have the D-pad. And what makes this D-pad great is the fact that it is larger than your typical PlayStation or Xbox D-pad. And it is a circular floating d-pad which is great for your input especially your diagonals it comes with your traditional looking d-pad as well as this alternative one which i find to be more effective for your diagonal input the directional accuracy is absolutely great with this controller and honestly it is one of my favorites of all times you'll also note that there are no analog sticks on this controller so if you're an analog fighter this may not be the ideal choice for you. I honestly have nothing bad to say about this controller. It is one of my favorites, which I have been using for a long time. But unfortunately, there is a downside to the B-Top C3. It is not compatible with the current generation of consoles, at least not out of the box. You will need to get a controller adapter, like one from Brooks, 
to be able to use, whether it be for your Xbox or your PlayStation. I use this controller back on my PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 natively, and then on the PlayStation 4 with an adapter. And I'm looking forward to getting the Brooks FGC adapter for the PlayStation 5 so that I can revisit this controller soon. So this next controller is the Hori Fighting Commander Okta for the PlayStation 5. It looks very similar to the B-Top that we were just talking about, but this one is compatible with the current generation of consoles. Now this is the PlayStation version, but there is an Xbox and a PC version as well. So why do I like this one? Well, it's similar to the B-Top Thorn with its six face buttons. The response time is super quick and accurate and tactile. The D-Pad is also a circular D-Pad, which I am a fan of, especially in fighting games. And it has a good level of resistance, which prevents from inaccurate inputs. But personally, the D-Pad is on the smaller side for me. And the reason is that the Hori Fighting Commander also has a left-sided analog stick. And although I am not a fan of using the analog stick on fighting games, this one is actually quite nice. It has an octagonal gate, which helps you lock in the four cardinal directions as well as those diagonals really well. And this is great for those half circle, quarter circle motions as well. You have the top and the bottom shoulder buttons on both sides, and similar to the B-top, they are instant buttons. No triggers, so the shoulder inputs are going to be very fast. And the nice thing is that these buttons are quite large. You have all the other PlayStation feature buttons, like the touchpad, the option, the share, and the home button. This is a great fighting pad that is compatible out of the box with your current generation of console. It is 100% wired, lightweight, and accurate, but it's not without its flaws. Although it's very responsive and I haven't had any significant input errors, I still feel like the D-pad is a bit on the smaller side for my liking. I wish they had made the D-pad larger, Next, let's talk about the profiles. The Hori Fight Commander Okta allows for different profiles and button customization, which is definitely a positive. But you cannot switch profiles without changing the settings from a PC. I wish Hori had a built-in memory option to save the different profiles and switch them on the fly as needed. Now, I feel like 99% of people are going to be fine with the default settings right out of the box. But if you have the option to customize, there is a convenience hurdle with the profile changing. Overall, I think this is a great controller and a good option for people who want to try a more dedicated fight pad that is not too big of a departure from your traditional console controller. Now this next one we're going to talk about is quite unique as it is marketed as a pro controller towards your first person shooter games. But it also has some features that are ideal in a fighting game and it is the Vitrix Pro BFG. Ultimately, it is a pro style controller with adjustable trigger stops, four mappable rear controller buttons, swappable thumbsticks of different heights, and profile switching. So why are we talking about this type of controller when we are discussing fighting games? What's unique about the Vitrix Pro BFG is that it has swappable modules. The left side controller module can be placed either in the PlayStation or Xbox orientation. So ultimately you can swap the location of the D-pad to whatever position you find more comfortable. And the right side module can be switched from your traditional thumbstick and four button layout to a six button fight pad module. You have your traditional X, O, square, triangle, which are shifted down to where the thumbstick would be with the addition of an R1 and an R2 above that. The buttons are super responsive, almost a mouse click like, so your inputs are going to be very quick, which is great. My only complaint with this fight pad is the button layout, how they have been shifted more towards the bottom of the module and the fight pad logo at the top. It would have been more ideal if the fight pad logo was more at the bottom of the module and the buttons were higher up on the module. It's not so much of a problem if you play claw, but if you are a traditional holder, reaching for that X and square can feel like a stretch at times. Now, if you are a thumbstick fighter, you have the option to use an octagonal gate to help lock in those diagonals, as well as different thumbstick heights and cap variations. If you are a D-pad fighter, you can swap out between your traditional four direction D-pad, a circular D-pad, similar to the Xbox Series controller, and this Vitrix Square D-pad, which I actually find to be very accurate. There is a lot more to this Vitrix Pro BFG, as it is meant to be a workhorse for all genre of games, and customizable to your liking. But considering this only from a fighting game standpoint alone, it doesn't stand out too much from the Hori fight pad we discussed earlier. If you are looking for a pro controller for shooters, action adventure, driving, and fighting games, this might be a good option for you. But for strictly as a fight pad, I don't think the price point is justified for the features that you can find in other options. Alright, so now let's shift focus away from the fight pad controllers and over to the other kind of fighting game controllers, the arcade stick. 
Now, arcade sticks are a completely different feel and input style when it comes to fighting games. And there are some things you have to take into consideration when it comes to using a fight stick versus a controller. You have to learn a brand new controller and not just a controller, but an input mechanism. With a fight stick, you are using your entire arm, wrist to enter in your directionals with your left hand and using four or five digits on your right hand for your attack commands. Now with a controller, this is more dependent on your thumb and your index finger for your shoulder and your triggers. The rest of your fingers are used to just support your controller. So you will have to develop a brand new muscle memory, timing, and skill set if you decide to switch over to an arcade stick. Arcade sticks are a lot larger in comparison to your controller. Now if you mostly play at home with friends or online, the form factor is not a big deal. But if you plan on competing in local or international competition, travel is more cumbersome with an arcade stick. Now this is not Nothing too crazy, but it's just something you have to keep in mind. Lastly, arcade sticks come in so many different size and configuration and can be highly customizable. So there can be a lot to consider when purchasing or building your own arcade stick. Now again, the purpose of this video is to show you the different options you have. By no means am I saying that the brands or models that I'm talking about are the best of their respective category. That all comes down to your preference. So the first fight stick we're going to talk about is the fight stick alpha from Hori and it is compatible with your current generation of consoles right out of the box. It has your traditional cabinet arcade button layout which fighting games were designed around. Now this one is marketed as a PlayStation 5 fight stick but it is also compatible with a PlayStation 4 and a PC. Now on the left side, you have the stick with an octagonal gate and a ball top head. Now on the right side, you have your eight input buttons fanned out across two levels. This arcade stick uses the Hayabusa buttons, which have a nice tactical feel and clickiness to them. Across the top, you have your PlayStation button, your share and a function button. The touchpad is located right in the center. And then you have your L3 and your R3 buttons and a lock slider to prevent accidental inputs of buttons that you do not need to use. One great feature about this arcade stick is how easily customizable it is. By pulling up on the top cover, you have access to all of the internal parts. So if you want to upgrade your buttons or stick, you can swap out dead and damaged buttons instead of having to buy a brand new arcade stick. You can even open the top acrylic layer and replace the artwork with your own design. It's light due to its plastic case, but strong enough to take a beating during intense sessions. It comes with a 9.8 foot cable, which is plenty of distance for you to plug into your console. The Hori Fight Stick Alpha retails at $199 US dollars, and there is also a special edition Street Fighter 6 version which retails for $229 US dollars. Now the last controller I want to talk about goes by many names. A stickless arcade stick, an all button arcade stick, a hitbox, or even cheating. Now the first time you see one of these, it might be hard to understand what is going on, but ultimately it is the same as an arcade stick, but the stick has been replaced with four cardinal input buttons. On the right, you have the same eight action input buttons for your action command, similar to what we saw in the Hori Fight Stick Alpha. But on the left side, you can clearly see there is no stick, but instead four buttons. And these four buttons represent left, down, right, and up. And it seems counterintuitive at first to have the up or the jump button at the bottom where the thumb sits, but it's actually pretty ingenious because it makes jumping a bigger commitment and more of an intentional action versus jumping around all the time. The advantage of having an all button arcade stick like this is that it can help drastically reduce your directional input errors. Instead of swinging around a stick from side to side and possibly missing directional inputs, having the four directional buttons allows for ideal accuracy and quick inputs because it is more of a button tap versus a wrist movement. Now I have the Fightbox F1, but there are so many companies that make different versions of an all button arcade stick. One of the most popular brands is Hitbox and that name has become synonymous with these types of all button arcade sticks. But there are so many different makes, models, layouts, sizes of these all button arcade sticks and it all comes down to trial and error for which one works out best for you. Now there is an official PlayStation 5 branded all button arcade stick by Vitrix which I have not tested out as of yet. This is my favorite way of playing fighting games. It feels like a combination of a fight pad with its directional input buttons on the left and the fun of an arcade stick with its eight large buttons and form factor. And there are so many different layouts and styles of these types of controllers. And again, 
it's so highly customizable over time. And the price range for these controllers can vary greatly, from as little as $99 off of Etsy and AliExpress, or up to $400 plus for the officially licensed version. Now the one thing you do have to be careful about is compatibility, because a lot of these all button arcade sticks are custom built. A lot of these are not officially licensed controllers for the respective consoles. Typically the boards are proprietary or from a company called Brooks, who have been a part of the fighting controller modding community for a long time. So make sure you do your research and confirm that your all button arcade stick is compatible with your console of choice. Alright you guys, well there you have it. A pretty comprehensive breakdown of some of the ideal controller types for the fighting game genre. This FGC and controller community is so deep and involved. There can be so much to learn and initially you can feel overwhelmed. But feel free to reach out to me and a great resource to learn about fighting game controllers is the Reddit subgroup Fight Sticks to learn so much more. If you guys have enjoyed this video, hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification button. Thank you for watching and follow me over on my other social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.